Hey guys, I'm at the airport right now, just the morning after the Belgian Waffle Ride Kansas. This is going to be a super quick video about the race. As you might have seen, I won the race, so that's uh, pretty good news. But uh, if you go look at the result, you'll see that I'm officially in 7th place. So this video is just about telling you guys why I think it's fair to say that I've won if we follow the right rules. I just want to preface before we start the video that this is not an attempt to take shot at the Belgian Waffle Ride organization or something. I really love those guys. I think um, the Belgian Waffle Ride are a big part of why gravel is getting so big and so fast. And uh, that's amazing for me because I can make a living of it. And plus, I think the Belgian Waffle Ride are the best race of the year. I think they're the best gravel race, at least. The course are just amazing. So I couldn't say more positive thing about the event. But I just want to uh, make this video because I think if we want gravel to grow, if we want gravel to be an official sport that's accepted and that is professional also and that we can trust the result, I think uh, this will probably help clarify some maybe unclear rule or something. So um, hopefully you like it. Well, let's jump straight away in what happened. So um, that's the GPX file. So as you can see, it was updated about 36 hours before the race. Uh, the morning of the race, I actually made sure it was the same and it was the same course. So that was the final official course. And if we zoom here at kilometer 58, that's where the confusion happened. So here's the, the first um, intersection that really caused a problem here at uh, kilometers 58.8 so as you can see the course says to go straight and just around here there's the bridge crossing so um, that's kind of where the problem happened at the intersection so as you can see so here's my Strava thing so that's the intersection just here here it is and I go straight to the bridge. Here's the winner, Tanner Ward, that won the race officially. And as you can see on his map, we were together at this point, and he also went straight. Like you can see that we kind of hesitated here, but uh, he also went straight. Now let me show you the women. So the women did actually follow the arrow. So as you can see here, we went straight, but the women took a left. So that's the big difference. That's where actually Villa News is wrong. So if you look at Villa News here, they say that you can go read it, but we were at the front of the race, but we were not at this point at the front of a race. We were still a group of about 40 riders. And they say, meanwhile, another quarter followed the sign, but that's not right. I mean, we were a group of 40 and we all took the wrong turn because we all said to each other, we kind of stopped a little bit and we were like, we're going to follow the GPS. We're not going to follow the sign. Maybe someone turned the sign on the road or something. And it actually happened in EWR, North Carolina. Someone went on the course, a car, just to make trouble, I guess, and change the sign. And the motto were like, don't follow the sign, don't follow the sign, follow your GPS. The thing is that you don't want to get lost. And if you follow the sign and there's one that just fall off or one that's not in the right way, then you just get lost in the middle of the desert in Kansas. So that's why I think the GPS is way safer and it should also always be the GPS. But we'll talk about that later on the solution side. So as you can see, I did not follow the sign. I followed the GPS here. The winner did not follow the sign, he followed the GPS here, contrary to the women that did follow the sign and not their GPS because they were still with the lead moto. The reason why we went straight is because the lead moto was not with us and the lead car, we saw the lead car turning, but they didn't say anything and we knew the bridge was coming and we knew the bridge was not accessible for the car. So we just like in our head, it was logical because they had to take an alternative road anyway. So at this point, we're just the riders. So we're a group of 40, like I said, I actually throw an attack because um, I know the bridge is going to be selective because you had to walk the bridge. So uh, it's just like stretch out the group. So I made sure to be first guy in the bridge. And uh, just after the bridge, I hit it crazy. So after the bridge, um, I guess around here, we're a group of four guys and we're leading the group. So that's crucial. Just remember that. So we continue here and we go down 
this part here. But if you remember correctly, the car took the right, so they followed the arrow, so they did what the woman did. So here it is, here's what the car did. So the car did that, shh, like this. And they meet us around there because what we did, we're actually coming by this road, like here, like this. And we turn here and the car is coming this way. So as you can see here, we're coming this way and we meet the car at this point. And that's my page, that's the winner's, winner's page, that's Tanner's page. As you can see, he did the same thing as me, but we meet the car here. So at this point, like I said, I was attacking in the bridge. So we were a group of four. I already made a selection and I'm not sure why, but the car didn't say anything to us. So in our mind, we're just, oh, the car's coming the other way because I knew a muddy part was coming. So I was like, it just makes sense for them. It's just the alternate route. They're gonna see us at another point on the course. I was not too thinking about it. My GPS was right. So they don't tell us anything. And we arrive at this uh, crazy muddy section here. So this, this section was like the hardest by far of the course. That's actually the section they took a picture in the Velo News article. And I'm telling you, it was like, like this, but two times worse, like it was crazy. Um, I actually was attacking in that sector. That was my goal. So my goal was attack there, made a first selection, and then you enter a single track, like five key later. So I was like, yeah, I need to put the pressure there. So I was looking back and I saw the three guys and I was dropping them. And I couldn't see like far back because of the mud and everything. So I was just assuming I was winning the race, making the great move. I was like, that's going to be a long way in front by myself. But I was just going all in. I was like, worst case, a, a small group's going to take me later on the road. And I, I can just spin the legs on the road by myself. So we took that crazy sector here. And as you can see, that's Tanner file. He meet the car here. It's the crazy sector here, the one I'm talking about that, as you can see, I took. And he take the car and he turned back and that's all perfect gravel and that's road. So the four of us doing that took us like 15 minutes and for them just turning back and doing the fast part was like not even 10, you know. So I, I went from having a small gap on them to being behind them. So if we continue on the route a little bit, there's like three miles on the road and then you enter that crazy single track that was like supposed to be a crucial part of the race. So if we look at Tanner's files, you see there's the single track. Like the only thing we do differently was that muddy part here. So in that single track, I was sure I was the first on the road, but I was actually catching people in my group. So I knew something was wrong and I was like, oh my God, what's, what's happening? So I was catching the guys that were dropped from our initial group of 40. So I had to stop because those guys were not able to ride that sector at all. They had a lot of trouble. So I had to wait behind them. And at the end of the single track, I have like a five minutes or a four minute gap on the lead group. So I passed from first in the breakaway from drop from the lead group. I mean, they were a group of like 10 or 15. They were rolling. All this section is all road. So it was like pretty much impossible to catch back. You know what it is? One against like 10 of the, like even if you're the strongest, you're not gonna catch up. So from that point on, I'm just by myself. There's like 100K left. So I'm actually just catching people, surfing from group to group. I was, like I said, like 40 on the road. And um, I finally ended up seven. I guess the main point I'm making, and I think the main point that's like super important to understand is that Velo News is not right. Everyone that, that was in front of me did not follow either the GPS course or the arrow. So I'm going to repeat it. That's the arrow course and that's the GPS course. The guys that won did the GPS course until they met the car and then they took a shortcut. In my mind, either you give the win to the, the first one who completed the GPS course, so me, so that's why I think I won. And the riders that were with me were one of the strongest by far and I was able to drop them. Or you give it to the first people that complete the arrow course. If your rule is no, the GPS course was not okay, the arrow is what we need to follow, then you give it to the first guy that completed the arrow course. I'm not sure what was his position. Maybe he's 40 yet or something, but if that's the rule, like you cannot give the win to someone that was just 
cutting course around. Like everyone in front of me took a shortcut. So, I mean, I could have took a shortcut at another place and win the race, you know? So that's my point. Either you give it to the GPS, the guy, the first guy who completed the right course on the GPS or the right course on the arrow. You cannot give the win to the, the guy that, that took the shortcut. So yeah, that's, that's the main point. If you want to make sure again, that's the, that's the final GPS course. And as you can see, I'm gonna zoom in on the crucial sector here. That's my map, Adam Roberge. And I did exactly that. As you can see here, that's the same form as it is here. And the winner did what we did at first. So the GPS course, not the arrow. And then they turned around when they saw the car to take the shortcut. And that's where they win the race. And that's the arrow course. So the woman did, did what the car did, did maybe what the guy that was like 40th or something or 50th did and if your point is that this guy must win i'm with you 100 percent i just think you should give the win either to the one follow the gps or the arrow so again my goal here is not to attack anyone i'm not angry at all the racer that took the shortcut i mean i don't know what the card tell them but i i understand it in my mind they should have said to the lead car okay we took the shortcut but there was four guys in front. Where are those four guys? And they should have neutralized the race or something. But I think they were pretty happy seeing that I was not in the group anymore. And I don't think I'm lying to anybody saying that. So I think they just keep it low. <laughs> it's okay. It's a race strategy. I understand. It's war out there. <laughs> I, I guess the solution, um, I think what should have happened is that at the first turn here, where we at first miss a change in the road. If something last minute change like that, you have to put an official here that says like, this is wrong. Like you guys need to turn around right now. You have to make it clear because you cannot ask people to follow the arrow. It's too dangerous. If you follow the arrow with someone on the road, change it, or there's an arrow that's not there anymore. You'll get people lose in the middle of nowhere and they can dry up hydration you can dry off cold it's gonna get dark like you have to follow your GPS you cannot follow the arrow so if the course change during the, the race as it did you need to place an official and redirect people to the GPS course as soon as possible that's how it should be made if not it's, it's too dangerous you cannot just follow the arrow like I said in North Carolina it was a Belgian waffle ride and someone changed the arrow and they tell us, don't follow the arrow, it's too dangerous, you know. Anyways, you, you get what I'm saying. So again, my goal is not to take shot at, it, at everybody. I'm just doing this video to make a point. All the other races, they say it's according to the GPS. And I understand this situation was really particular. They had to change the course during the race because the landowner finally didn't want us to pass on his land or something. So Belgian Waffle Right did the best they could. And I just think a neutral after this error would have ruled out the problem. But I think the front guys were really, really happy that I was not in the group. And also that John Keller and Jake Maggie were not there because we're three of the strongest guy for sure. So um, I think I won the race because out of everyone that did the GPS course, and I can tell you that's the majority of people, everyone was talking about that muddy part at the end of the race. I was the first finisher of that race. So if that's your gauge, I won the race. If your gauge is whoever followed the arrow, then it's the guy who was like, 40th or something or I'm not sure his position if you ever can find him you can write in the comment that'd be awesome but the guy that won in my opinion it's not the guy that took this shortcut <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense at all I think that's about it super exciting news actually I'm talking about the Belgian waffle right guys to have a race in Quebec in Canada so the first Belgian waffle ride in Canada I'm gonna talk to the FQSC our federation in Quebec and try to make this happen that would be amazing like I said they're just the top organizer in gravel. The way they do the race, it feels so professional. The expo is amazing. We have awful lab before the race. There's coffee, there's music. Um, Michael Merckx, the organizer, just knows how to throw a party and a, a great event also. Like, I'm complaining about this mishap, but um, all the other three that I did before this one, nothing like this happened. It was just like I said, the landowner literally changed his mind while we were racing. So that kind of fucked up everything. 
that's about it. I'm not trying to give excuses. I just think when you win, when you put all this work, I pre-rolled the course like when we can advance. I was staying in Kansas. Like when you've put that much effort into something, I think uh, it's worth uh, explaining your point. That's about it for today. Thank you so much for listening. I'll do a big sugar recap super soon. It's actually done. I just need to publish it. But I think this one was um, more... Um, I needed to publish this one faster because Villain News was uh, telling the wrong thing. I'm not taking shot at Villain News. The guy that was there, he's uh, been something. He was like taking as much note to try to understand, but some people were not saying the right thing or some people were not uh, being clear, I guess. So I was expecting an article that was not saying the right thing. So there's just three things that I wanted to confirm before I publish the video. The first one is that I'm not taking shot at all the writers. I'm actually very pleased for the top three guys that won. The second one is concerning the prize money. So a Belgian waffle writer was kind enough to give me the same prize money as the first guy. The third one is just to come back to when we met the car. When I was with four guys in front, the car never told us to turn back. Thank you so much for listening. As usual, take care of yourself by making the most optimal choice in every moment. And do the same to take care of the ones you love.